Hi guys, welcome back to another Maddie Ice Reviews. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at installing a new cooler on my PC. As you can see, this is uh, our little MSI afterburner. In a previous video, we put on a new CPU, the Ryzen 7 3700X, and uh, we used a standard, um, the Prism cooler that comes with it. It's not a bad cooler, but it's not nearly as good as the Hyper 212 that we'd had previously. Even though I've optimized the fan profile and it's not as obnoxious and loud now, I don't much care for how this fan system works. I think we can do better. And I really did not want to put the 212 back in here. The thing is a pain in the neck. I wish there was a better way to mount that somehow. But that, that thing was just an absolute nightmare to mount in the case, and I do not look forward to doing that again. So what we're going to be doing instead is installing the smallest one I could find. The Cooler Master, this is the B120. It's just a standard 120 uh, style uh, radiator. And it's got a little, look at that little crazy little RGB thing in. But yeah, and uh, it is for our socket. I don't know how this will do, but I'm hoping in comparison to this little cooler we have in here, it'll either be as efficient or maybe more consistent at least. If it hovered at a steer, you know, steady 40, that would be fine with me. Now we aren't under load right now and as you can see this little CPU likes to run a little bit hotter without even anything going on. We're you know, sitting at the 40s right now. Whereas previously, that uh, 212 would keep things at a nice, you know, maybe 32 degrees, but that was on the previous CPU, not on the 3700X. Okay, we're going to run a Cinebench real quick, and we're going to see temperature-wise what we wind up with. Okay, we got Cinebench R20 open, and we're just going to try and see. We're running right now. I don't have this super overclocked. We're at 3.85. And the voltage, I uh, actually went back down to default on the voltage, so it's not, you know, over voltage or anything like that. So, all right. Here we go. Oof. As soon as the test starts, guys, and we go under load, we're already at 75, 76, 77. Okay, we completed the test. It didn't you know, shut down on us, but man, that was not good. Let's see what our top temperature was. Okay, 86, 87, 80. Did we hit 88? We did. So we, it looks like we got a maximum of 88 on there. I'm just not happy with uh, thermals like that. I think that is way too hot. Okay, I figured I'd also let you guys see some of our video game. We don't play much. This is Far Cry 5. This is probably the newest game I currently have installed right now. But everything's on. High settings. We're on ultra on everything that we can be. We have motion blur. All that good stuff on. And let's run our test and see how bad this gets. Okay, so frames, fine, whatever, but uh, we got up to 78 at the high point. Kind of hot for a you know, benchmark, so during the hotter, I mean, this thing easily, I think, would push into the 80s with extended gameplay. I have not been happy with the performance of this cooler. It's very loud, it ramps up all the time. I've tried optimizing the profiles, and it honestly doesn't do that great of a job. What we will be putting in there is actually going to be this. This is Cooler Masters B120. It is an AIO. So we're going to pull her out and put this in. Uh, what we are going to be using with the 120, they give you a little Cooler Master fan that comes with it. It's a 
650 to 2000 RPM fan, which is probably fine. It feels a little chintzy, but it has some, you know, dampening on it. Uh, it probably would be okay. My Evo 212, what I was using was one of these. This is one of Noctua's industrial fans, and this particular one right here is their 3000 RPM series. Yes, it's not as quiet as their other fans, but holy cow, does this thing push some air. And I think this is gonna do a lot better. This is gonna give us our best chance possible for this AIO to be a success. So let's start by unplugging it. This is our little LED portion, and here's a little CPU fan portion where it plugs in. One thing I do love about these AMDs, these are quick detach. I don't know why Intel is still stuck on all these convoluted screws and step off, but this is a, this is a phenomenal. All you do is flip the little lever and then that releases it. And then you just kind of have to pull the little piece off. I might have to use a screwdriver or something to help me out. Cause it's just that little lip there. It's got these little like tags on the bottom so it can um, clip onto it. Let's get our little pry tool and see if we can't work it off by hand without having to take off the graphics card. There we go. And then this was not me. These coolers from AMD come pre-installed with thermal paste. And look at that mess. I didn't check it after I put it on, but it's very spotty. I mean, it's got, obviously there's a ton. It's, it's leaked out all over the place. It's all over here. We've got spots that aren't coated correctly in my opinion. A nice thin coat's what you want. It looks like right here. I can read the risen you know, symbol. It's, so let's use our just regular thermal paste, nothing special. And we're gonna put a little you know, pea size, grain of rice, whatever you, you know, like to do. There you go. More than enough thermal paste. That is the exact right amount. Uh, now, put, put however much you want, guys. I, I honestly don't care. If you put more than that, though, it's probably going to get a little sloppy. And then you can actually spread it out if you want to to make sure you put enough on there. Okay, here she is. Pretty nice. Nice little copper right there. And then when it gets mounted in there, it's going to be sitting in this orientation, so it's going to be a little bit awkward since that's such a small run, but it'll be fine. Our fan is gonna get mounted right to this side, right here that I'm holding. So we're gonna mount the Noctua right on there. Okay, so we've got our fan mounted on here now. All you do is use the included screws. They're just long ones that feed through there to help you mount your fan. Make sure you do have the airflow going the right way. So you can see right there, I've got my side and then it also is pointed as going out on the radiator, which is what we want. If you're going in, you're going to be heating up your system and probably doing a whole lot worse than you were before. I also took the liberty of installing the little clamps that work with this AM4 socket. Okay, both sides are on now. We're just going to tighten it down. So it was pretty quick, and that's my first time doing one of these. It, I mean, you just kind of have to finagle it around until you get the right angle. Okay, and I'm just tightening these by hand. They keep turning. I don't want to go too tight, but I figure if I can still turn it without straining, it, it needs to be tightened. And both the screws are just at the top now. This doesn't have any play on it. It's pretty much standing right there. And these, you know, if I, I'd really have to, you know, like force that to make it turn farther. So I think we got good contact there. So that was pretty damn easy. The first time we did the Evo 212, it took me like 25 minutes to get that damn thing mounted because it is so impossible to get that in the correct position and then make it fit on there and tighten the screws. There's no room. Okay, let's see how this part goes. And the worst part was fighting with this little radiator to try to get in position. So let's make sure we get all our cables where we need them. Okay. And this is just going to go right here. It's going to look better after we tighten it in, but this is kind of a sloppy run. But when you buy a pre-built AIO, that's what you get. It's kind of, you know, it is what it is. When you do custom, then you can start, you know, screwing around with, I want to, do exact lengths and things like that. 
Okay, we're fully mounted here on the back. As you see, we don't have any wiggle there. The fan's nice and securely mounted. I do really like these screws. And Noctua's little dampeners right here should help with any residual sound. Okay, yeah, so I'm just going to connect this uh, main pump to fan, you know, CPU fan. Hope that works. It doesn't really tell you on in the instructions and they're all in Chinese, as we said, so. There we go. I know it's not beautiful right now. We'll worry about cleaning up the cables after we know if it works or not. And then for our actual fan on a radiator, our Noctua, we are going to put this into the option because that is also part of the CPU. And my hope is that by uh, running a system fan profile and optimizing it, that we will then be able to set our fan to the correct ramp so we don't get constant spikes. Okay, so like I said, we will take care of that later. That's just temporary for now. All right, guys, we've got uh, the I.O. hooked up with a Noctua fan. And I can already tell you the Noctua fan is not optimized for this right now. It keeps revving up and down too with the power curves. Now I'm curious to see if our performance is going to be affected. Our previous best with this system uh, overclocking it was at 47.69 and then after I dialed the overclock down a little bit for temperature reasons we got 45.92 which is pretty damn good. Alright here we go. I'm sure you guys will be able to hear the spikes too but as this is running what I'm going to do is end up oh yeah there it goes and she is picking up some steam. Holy shnikes, that was actually impressive. So I don't know if you guys, uh, you guys probably heard that ramp up. I think the fans are set right now that as soon as it hits 70 degrees Celsius to go like 80, 90, 100%, I don't know what it is, but our test right here is pretty conclusive. That orange one is our test. We had 4602. We did better than our best uh, with that Wraith Prism. So I think that's pretty impressive. And our max temperature, if you couldn't see, I know it's kind of hard on here. We reached a maximum of 73 degrees at the hottest, but it really did not budge in this you know, time frame right here. It went 71, 72, and those, that knock to a fan did its freaking job. That was amazing. I am, I am super impressed. Okay, I know I did this in the other videos, so let's, uh, let's exit this and let's open up Far Cry 5. Let's see how cooking this thing gets. I'm sure as soon as this test begins and those explosions start going off, this thing's gonna start ramping up pretty hard. Okay, wow, that was impressive. So first, you know, the frame rates, really good. Um, at ultra settings, we're getting an average of 105, we're getting the lows at 87, and we're getting the max at 121. That's, that's super. Here's what I'm impressed with. This entire test, I mean, it started at like 56, and it went up to 57, and at the very end, we hit 58. That's it. When this thing was running with that Wraith Prism, this was a minimum, constantly, of like 68 to 70. This thing was just cooking with that other uh, cooler around there. All right, guys, I got to say I am super, super, super impressed with this Cooler Master B120 cooler for a little 120 millimeter radiator and a Noctua 3000 industrial fan. It is super impressive, in my opinion, for a budget AIO. Now, I'm going to do optimization, and I would recommend anyone that buys this do the same because the fan does still tend to ramp quite a bit, and that's a little bit of an annoyance if you're gaming. Like I said, I'm video editing. I really don't care if it ramps that much, but I'm still going to try and optimize it so I have the best possible performance. All right, guys. That does it for this one. We'll catch you next time. Have a good night.